So I think most of you have probably heard the term API. You've heard it here or at your company somewhere. Um, and um, you probably know pretty much aware that it's a way to glue applications together so they can talk to each other, um, basically interoperating either two different companies or two different products or something like that. And you probably also know that it's pretty horrible underneath the covers. There's strange encodings. There's error messages. You're over your Twitter rate limit or whatever. And they're kind of hard to love. You know, they're less fun than a nicely designed UI that you might find on a good website. Um, so really what these things are doing is providing raw access to your data or to your services in some way. So people don't have to go through the website. They can go through other channels and kind of extract that stuff and do stuff with it. And there are a lot of companies which have very successful API programs, and there's a huge amount of business moving to that. But we're not going to talk about that. That's kind of day job stuff, and it's kind of boring. So we won't talk about that. We're going to talk about some other stuff that APIs are starting to do and some amazing things that people are doing with them uh, that also people here might engage in or that already are, in fact. So number one is uh, making the world more generous, because there are a bunch of APIs that allow you to embed giving and lending experiences in a bunch of different places in the, in, on the web and not having to drive people to the same site. So that helps people engage with charities, which is a big deal. Second area, totally different, is uh, biosciences. There's now 1,500 plus services that allow scientists to work on data without having to move that data from place to place. They can just run the functions wherever they are, and this hugely changes their workflow and productivity. Uh, Mendeley is a company that just opened uh, an API for authors and citations, so you can really get a sense of the flow of ideas and how um, uh, kind of scientific knowledge is being built up. And actually, just as uh, a little aside on this, uh, Google Scholar is one of the best resources on the web for this, and it's one of the few Google properties that doesn't have an API. So there's actually a campaign on various groups to get one. So if there's anyone from Google, we'd really like an API for Google Scholar. It would be pretty amazing. So um, there you go. Get, get working on it, I hope. Next one is open content. So there are companies that are now opening up their content, which they would traditionally sell, and pushing it to many places on the web. So this is great editorial content often. It's being moved around uh, and being republished in various places and extending that reach and getting more people to see it. Uh, energy data, there are a bunch of APIs now that give you excellent data on the, uh, how much uh, um, energy is being consumed by various devices and, and houses. And that's being remixed to create much better models um, on how to actually kind of um, and construct construct those objects. Pertube is another great example here. You can actually take real-time sensor data and turn it into a baseline for creating applications that control the environment in spaces like this and make us more energy efficient. So having this kind of data available is a huge deal. There's really no excuse for us not to build better sustainable living uh, kind of uh, environments with this data available and, and with these, with these uh, op new opportunities. Um, Roman already uh, talked about this one, which is a, another really amazing space. So opening up this government data, which is starting to happen, is a really big deal. A lot of people are now getting access to stuff they wouldn't have. So it might be voting records, it might be spending, it might be transport data. That really allows us to build new applications to kind of glue society much better together. And an example of how easy this is, um, uh, from UN data, they have tons of data, which is in zip file format. So we were able to drop that onto Google App Engine. And hey, presto, you had a new resource, which you could actually do some stuff with. Number nine, so I'm running fast. Um, Remixing human knowledge, so Wikipedia and Freebase and other resources also starting to have APIs. And that really makes it possible kind of to draw that information out and put it into other contexts, which is a, uh, just a great way of reusing it. So I really think of it like this, is that Wikipedia was Web 2.0, which is collaborative, but it was really through one website. So maybe 3.0 is that kind of wiki API where you can read and write into these uh, data sources from many different places. And it really changes the dynamics and the speed. And the last one is biodiversity. There's some amazing data out there which is starting to get remixed just a little bit it's right at the beginning on where species are and how, how we can kind of understand what their movements are and how we can kind of support them better. Um, so I really, that's, a, that's a great resource. So just kind of my message overall is this, this API thing is getting data into the right people's hands uh, that might not be the original owners of that data and getting users to experience that data or the service in different places and allowing them to engage much better. So like I said at the beginning, APIs are kind of hard to love. They're pretty spiky, horrible, ugly things under the covers. But you can do some pretty amazing things with them. The, the things I talked about just now, they're all individual projects with tons of people working on them. And uh, they're really worth engaging with. And that's pretty much all I wanted to say. Thanks very much.